I'm Kyle Slab and this area where we are, this has been our grandmother's and, and her grandmother right back to generations. This is our, our country here and our traditional place, so this is where we still are. For me, I want to see people um, growing in their spiritual relationship. To walk with Jesus, it is life. I can't see any other life apart from him. He's in everything and he is everything. I think that's what problem we have sometimes. Jesus becomes church and becomes songs and becomes words and books. And that's, that's it. But Jesus isn't just them things. Jesus is everything. The life in our heart that's beating, you know, like every day, every beat, every breath, every step. Being conscious of that, that is life. Like, what he's shown me that what he does and where he goes and how he does things that's true freedom and then you can know what true relationship is and you can know peace all the things that he promised they're, they're real and, they, and you can have them we do got to walk different to how everyone else is walking sometimes we will talk different to how everyone else is talking but as long as we walk with him we talk his words we, we do his action follow his action, his example that's freedom. Roles might change and position might change and things might change, but a call always stays the same. We can be involved in business, we can be involved in leadership, we can be involved in, in everything, but a call is a call, you know. And I don't think anyone that starts to walk with Jesus can get away from the call that he calls us to, you know. And that's to be light and that's to be, to be salt in the earth. And um, whatever it looks like tomorrow, I know I'll still be on that path. I know I'll still be, I'll still be listening to that call. It called me to that every day. I'm involved in cultural education and Indigenous youth, and seeing them know who they are as Aboriginal people, and to stand up and, you know, be um, be strong in that, and to go forward and to be useful to their people, and strong leaders there for the future. A long time ago, we talk about reconciliation. This old fellow, he never, his English wasn't his first language. And he asked, he said, what's that one, reconciliation? We talked about it, we said, when, when Aboriginal people and, you know, other people, they can, they can come together and work together and, and be one. He said, oh, that's an easy one. You just got to tell the, go tell your younger brother what his role is and that he belongs to. Aboriginal people for a long time have been saying to the rest of the country, you know, the rest of Australia, that you have a place and you do belong here, you do have a role. And the older brother in this country, and the first people, have a role and a responsibility. And that's partly to look after, look after you. But you belong there and you have a place there. But you're the younger brother, so you need to understand what your place is and know where that role is. You know, we'll see not only Aboriginal people and white people but all all the nations that come to come to this country that being called to this country all have a place around that fire you know and listen to the older brother listen to the old people our old people of this country and you'll start to understand your place and where you do fit in in this big family and around this fire For us, you know, like your banam, your, your younger brother, your, your special brother, that's the support. Older brother has responsibility to look after the younger brother. But the younger brother has responsibility to support that older brother to do his job, to give him everything that he needs. You know, the young brother actually is, is the strong brother. And that's not a, it's not a hierarchical system. It's not a power thing. Older brother isn't up here and younger brother down here. They're together, but they have different roles. Those roles are equal roles and at this point in this country, you know, like Aboriginal people, we need that support now. We need that younger brother to play his part in the big picture. We'll start to see things put right when things are put right, you know, everybody will benefit from that. And our old people said that, you know, don't forget the Yidali. Don't forget your white brothers and sisters in what God has for our people and for this land. And I hope we see it happen in our generation. Everybody to know what their place is and go forward together in, in our cultural way that 
that older brother, he's responsible for the younger brother. He's responsible for this land, you know. We need to respect one another, make strong families and make strong communities. Make sure that our young people know who they are and, and that they have a cultural responsibility to contribute to our people and to look after our old people and, you know, show them respect and let them have the space to share the knowledge that they've carried for a long time. The one thing that's been on my heart only this last week, you know, is in Matthew. You know, it talks about what good is salt if it has no, no saltiness. It's no good. It's still no use if you don't taste it, you know. You have to taste it. And what God really put on my heart is that you have to engage with him and you have to engage with one another to get the saltiness out of it. You know, it has to be tasted. We can't sit on our side and other people sit on their side. For God to do it through people, we have to engage. We have to put the effort into those relationships. What are we doing to, to engage? What are we doing to taste it? What am I doing to be the salt? What am I doing to be the light? How will they know if I don't go and share with them? How will I know if I don't go and share with them? People need to get out, people need to engage. Whether it's a cup of tea, whether it's going to share the crobbery, helping with the project, whether it's going to spend time in a community, I think that's really on my heart lately. God speak to us through the land and and all the things around us. That's one thing, taking young followers, even groups onto the land and, and they start to hear, hear him and see him in it, you know? And that's something that I'm really passionate about. We grew up in this kind of environment and our grandmothers and our grandfathers, they tell us that when you're in the bush and when you're on the beach or in the ocean, always be watching and always be listening. In Romans 1.20 where it says it's the power of the Godhead and his, and his handiwork's clearly seen in the things that he made, you know, we, when we're on the land and, and out on our country and that's what we see. Sometimes the, the world's too fast and too separated. Always take time, you know, to listen, listen to what God is speaking. The language that he has, you know, them birds have a language and these trees and the wind, it's all speaking to us. You know, in scripture it says that his voice is heard in, in the storm. His voice is heard in the ocean. His voice is heard in the wind. We need to take time and, and to listen, to hear him. There's one prayer that I really practice, and if it's a prayer for the whole nation, it's only two words that old people taught me, you know, like when we were young, when we'd go to the house and, or when we'd sit down, something that, that I practice every day. I say, binango nyalangi. Always listen and always be watching. Open your ears and open your eyes. That's my prayer for this nation, that ears be open, that eyes be open.